I'm Matt. I make a bunch of videos about worship guitar and about pedals, and people who follow my pedal board walkthroughs can tell that my board gets bigger and more complicated every year. But I got interested in the idea of what was the cheapest board I could make that would sound professional. So I set out to find what are like the cheapest and most essential pedals to play worship music that I actually think sound as good as the stuff that I have or close. Um, a lot of even like cheap worship videos are still up near a thousand dollars or whatever. And I, I was like, I swear I can do better than that. So this is in my opinion about the cheapest board you could make that would actually sound professional quality. I ordered all of these pedals on Reverb.com, and I, in every case, I just bought the cheapest one that was currently available. So these are real life prices, but they are like used or discounted pedals. I didn't pay full price for any of them, um, but they're all prices that are pretty easy to duplicate if you just hop onto Reverb.com or maybe eBay. And then this is only for the board. I'm assuming you have a guitar and an amp already, but I'm treating this as if the amp is just clean and pretty much all your sound is gonna be coming from the pedals. So step one, I did not pay for a board. Uh, Pedal Train Nano or something about this size that's a professional board would cost $60 or so. I found a piece of trash wood that my dad got off of like a pallet and then we sawed it down to the right size. I put some little furniture mover things on the bottom and some Velcro on the top. And this is a free pedal board that's the right size. So if you have access to any flat object about yay big, um, I would not recommend paying for a board when you're first starting out. It's just kind of an unnecessary expense that you can get to later. So this is my board. And then the first ingredient you're gonna need is a drive pedal. Um, that's for any genre really, but specifically in worship music, people tend to really like transparent drives or blues breaker based drives, which are anything derivative of the Marshall blues breaker, which was an old pedal. And there are several clones of it available now. The JHS Morning Glory seems to be the one I see most often on worship boards. There's also the Analog Man Prince of Tone is related to that. I use a Snouse Black Box. But for cheapest Blues Breaker clone that I was able to find, I have a Moore Blues Crab. It's one of these micro pedals that Moore makes. And it is a Blues Breaker based pedal, but for about half or a third or less of any of those other ones that I listed. So very cheap overdrive, but I like how Blues Breaker drives sound, so this can be your drive. And then the second essential piece for a worship board is a good quality delay. And there are delays that exist cheaper than the TC Electronic Flashback, but none that I've ever really liked. So the Flashback is an awesome sounding delay. It has a bunch of different modes, digital, analog, tape, modulated bunch of things and they all sound awesome. It's just a really good sounding pedal, which is important, but it's also only like 120 bucks used. And I've ordered a TC Electronic Flashback 2 specifically because it accepts tap tempo, which is so important in worship music to be able to sync your, your echo repeats to the tempo of the song that lets you unlock all kinds of different sounds that you can't do otherwise. So if you're gonna follow my advice here, get a Flashback 2, not a Flashback 1, because it can't do that. That's why I sold mine. The Flashback 2, you can tell it's a 2 if they don't have it in the title by this MASH logo right here. The MASH button is a new thing on the, t on the 2, so that's how you can tell which one it is. And then I've got an MXR tap right here, so it can accept external tap input and then this was about 120, this was about 30, so it's $150 for like a tap tempo capable, very versatile delay pedal with a bunch of different modes. The other cheapest version of this that I could think of that I like is the Boss DD20, if you can find a used one. Um, that would have tap tempo and have a bunch of different modes on it and be around the same price, but I like how the flashback sounds better. And then the third key element is a good reverb, and it needs to be specifically a reverb that's capable of kind of ambient long sounds. So not like a spring reverb or a 50s type thing. The Boss RV5 is kind of the iconic modulated reverb. It has this modulate mode that is really famous for ambient sounds. So I ordered a used RV5 for about 80 bucks. Um, they're easy to find for about that price. This is the second time I've bought one for $80. So probably the cheapest good sounding 
ambient reverb that's available. And then for the boring stuff that hooks it up, um, that's why I put 300-ish in the title of this video, because if you don't have cables and things, it's going to put you over a little bit. But I'm using Planet Waves patch cables. You can get three for $10. These are awesome and super dependable. And then for power, I have used a True Tone one spot. This is a multi-plug five, and then you just get the one spot adapter and it can plug into the wall and power up to five things. So that's what I'm powering this with. Okay, so obviously the price thing doesn't matter at all if it doesn't actually sound good. So here are the sounds I've dialed in. These are, keep in mind, pedals I just ordered like this week and have spent a couple of minutes with each. So here is my unaffected, just guitar into the amp sound. And then here is with that blues crab on. I have it cut, dialed in kind of low gain because I'm still on my neck pickup here, but I'm picturing a lot of the stuff I'd be doing for worship music would be kind of ambient and not a lot of high gain. And then here is the flashback. Here is the RV5 reverb. And then with another thing the flashback can do is dotted eighth.
anyway, that would be my pick for about the cheapest worship board you could put together that would get you most of the tones that you need to play this kind of music. Um, the Blues Crab gets a little heavier than I have it here. If you need to uh, play something a little harder. <laughs> But it's still kind of a general, like a transparent, kind of lower gain overdrive. So perfect for this style. And then the flashback and the RV5 get you a lot of different ambient sounds. So it's a lot of versatility for a pretty cheap board. Um, I in, Throughout the video, I've mentioned some other alternatives that I didn't use that are also very good, uh, or at least reviewed well if they're the couple of things I haven't tried. But anyway, those would be my picks for if you were just getting started out in this genre, I would, an overdrive, a delay, and a reverb will get you pretty much more than halfway there. Everything else after that is just kind of fine tuning and slight variations in sound. So I would definitely recommend any of these three or the alternatives that I mentioned in the little slides before this. But if you're just getting started in this style or you want like a small grab and go board or whatever. Those are my picks. Um, obviously everyone's got their own opinions and you can weigh in in the comments if I overlooked something or you think there's a better option, but hope that helps.